From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN New News. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us on the new news. I'm Diane Parker. Ed has the midweek forecast, plus it's on every single ballot in Montana this November. We take a look at the abortion issue, but first, our top story. In Montana's Western District race for U.S. House, candidate Ryan Zinke is under fire for a recent campaign ad focused on his opponent, Monica Trinnell's legal representation as an attorney of a man convicted of abuse. MTN's Jonathan Ambarian spoke to the women at the center of that case who feel re-traumatized by the ad. In the congressional race in Montana's 1st District, Republican candidate Ryan Zinke has attacked Democrat Monica Trinnell for serving as an attorney for a man convicted of sexual abuse. Several women have reached out to MTN, saying to have that issue resurface has been painful for them. Because it's deeply traumatizing <laughs> to uh, have that memory flashed right on your face. Danielle Moore was one of four underage victims who Robert Riggs was convicted of abusing in 2002 in Gallatin County. She says she was shocked to find her story was now becoming part of a political campaign. I have somehow been able to fix something that happened to me 23 years ago and it's not right for politicians to use that in political gain. Since talking to Moore, MTN has heard from two other victims who shared her anger about the case being brought back up. Riggs was found guilty on four separate charges. In 2011, Trinnell represented him when he asked for a new trial, claiming his original attorney hadn't provided an effective defense. The Montana Supreme Court denied the request. Last month, Zinke's campaign began running a TV ad prominently featuring Riggs' name and photograph and describing the crimes he was convicted of. It said Trinnell, quote, argued to let him out of prison to roam our neighborhood streets. Moore says her sister saw the ad and shared it with her. She was especially concerned about how it would affect the other victims. Victims. Politicians really need to think about how their words impact the people that elect them. We're the people. They work for us. That is how it's supposed to be, and they're forgetting that. The women told MTN they were particularly upset by seeing Riggs' picture in the ad. They said they'd like Zinke's campaign to withdraw it and potentially apologize to those affected. In response to MTN, Zinke's campaign released a statement on October 13th, saying the ad hadn't aired in the previous several days. They said, quote, Ryan has deep sympathy for these women and respects their feelings. The commercial stopped airing a few days ago. The issue, however, remains that America is facing a crime epidemic, which is made worse by liberal extremists like Monica Trinnell. Thank God she failed. Imagine the trauma that victims would have suffered had Monica won, vacated the conviction, forced a new trial, and had him released from prison. During MTN's Western District Congressional debate in Bozeman earlier this month, Trinnell called Zinke's ad a lie. She said her claims had nothing to do with the underlying charges against Riggs, and there was, quote, no set of circumstances where he would have been released to roam the streets free. She said all Americans are entitled to due process. In a statement shared by her campaign on October 15th, Trinnell said, quote, Ryan Zinke's decision to air an ad based on lies, forcing victims and their families to relive this trauma, highlights the worst of our politics. My heart goes out to everyone involved. The victims MTN spoke to said they're not happy that Trinnell represented Riggs, but they didn't believe the issue should be used for political attacks. She's not right either, but he's not right either. And I'm sick of the division in this country. All it's doing is hurting people. They're not seeing that it's hurting people. In Helena, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News. On ballots, legislative referendum 131 is described as an act to adopt the Born Alive Infant Protection Act, which is meant to ensure that doctors take all medical steps necessary to preserve an infant's life after being born. Proponents say this will ensure the protection of all life in Montana. However, opponents say the bill does not take viability into account and could prolong the suffering of a baby with no hope of survival. LR 131, the way that it's worded, is going to force um, physicians to intervene in cases that 
is not medically appropriate. Both federal and state law already establishes penalties for doctors who negligently or knowingly cause the death of a premature baby. However, Montana State Representative Matt Regeer, who carried LR-131, said Montana State's law does not go far enough, and he took issue with the question of who decides viability. We need to make it abundantly clear that here in Montana, the protection of all life is available. Regeer did not respond to calls for comment Tuesday on the referendum. Dr. Tim Mitchell is a Missoula-based maternal fetal medicine specialist who cares for people experiencing high-risk pregnancies, and his work can involve telling people with a wanted pregnancy that their baby may not survive past birth. In some patients, when they learn of these types of, um, of these findings, decide that they don't want to continue with the pregnancy. It would be too hard for them to carry a pregnancy to term knowing that, that their baby is going to die shortly after birth. There are other families, though, who want to carry that, that uh, fetus to term and, and to deliver a you know, a live born baby to be able to hold them and say goodbye. During a September rally in opposition to LR-131, Jen Banna of Missoula said while pregnant with her daughter Anna, doctors told her the child's brain hadn't fully developed and Anna would not survive for long. Banna opted to continue the pregnancy. The opportunity to snuggle and sing to her would not have been possible if she had been taken away immediately. Anna Louise would have died in a different room without me, robbing me of the opportunity of comforting and holding her during her short life. A proponent of LR-131, Montana State Representative Lola Sheldon Galloway of Great Falls, said, quote, The opposition is twisting this to not what the intent of this was. And if we are allowed to kill babies when they are still alive, our state is in a sick state of mind. For medical professionals who did not comply with LR-131, they could potentially face up to 20 years in prison and up to $50,000 in fines. In Missoula, Ashley Nurbovig, MTN News. The Cascade County Sheriff's Office is asking voters to approve a public safety mill levy this November. The levy will help with salary and staff retention issues. The Sheriff's Office says deputies are leaving for more competitive positions. The IRS is adjusting federal tax brackets to account for inflation. Tax brackets for some types of filers will get a 7% bump, which means many Americans will keep more money. The adjustments don't take effect until 2023. Montana has a new meat processing facility. Prairie Meats has just opened in Lothair. The facility took 15 months to complete with help from the Federal American Rescue Plan funding. And that's a look at some of the day's top stories. Storm Tracker weather starts now with meteorologist Ed McIntosh. The course over the course of the next couple of nights could be the best time for you to be able to check out the Orionid meteor shower as the Earth collides with the path from Halley's Comet. Those dust particles burn up and give us a pretty good show. We're going to have a better one once we start looking in towards December, but if you have the patience for it, best time is probably about 2 or 3 in the morning. Just give your eyes time to adjust to the darkness and wait it out. Wait out the forecast. It's coming up next. A Halloween attraction in Whitehall is the top spooky spot to check out this year. That according to Travel Pulse, which named Whitehall's haunted house attraction screams come true as the state's best Halloween destination of 2022. The newest additions to the haunted house include an escape room and a haunted bus. The attraction is open October 21st through the 30th.